What's up, spectators? Welcome back to an episode of Virtue's Last Reward. Last time, we were with Clover and Alice, and we finished up in the pantry, which was a bit tedious, but now that that's done, we get to go with the voting, and I think if you look at the, um, the flowchart... It's gonna be another, it's gonna be novel sections all the way down, and depending on how we spend our time, we might have enough time to go down both, but I'm assuming this is gonna be another death end, probably not too long, but this is going to be something else. If it's not locked, it's going to take a while. Ah, I'm rambling. Let's go ahead. 45 minutes remain until Ambidex game polling closes. The gate's been opened! One of the other teams must have done it. But the rest of us aren't even back yet. Well, we can fix that. Let's get moving. Just then. Whoa! Did you two just get back? Yes, we did, but... Then the team that opened the AB gate must have been the ones who went through the blue door. That would be Luna, Bai, and Dia. Huh? Wait, you guys went through the green door, didn't you? Then why the hell did you come out of the blue one? There's an explanation for that, I promise. Just tell me, have any of you seen Quark? Quark? No, we haven't seen him. Did something happen? He's gone. On the other side of the green door, we found a room called the Treatment Center. We found our key cards and left. But on our way out, he just disappeared. So you went through the blue door to see if he'd gone in there. No, that's not it. Look at this map. Tammy, you better move that cute little butt. Ooh, you're so cute. With your soft little belly. <laughs> so you go through the green door and the treatment center, and eventually you end up at the blue door. It looks like there's a pretty big room in the middle there. What is it? A warehouse similar to the one on floor A. In any event, we've spent some time searching, but have been unable to locate Quark. Huh. Well, maybe he went back to the other floor already. That is a possibility. I will return and see. I'm going back through the blue door. The girl will take a look at the area Luna and her team were searching. I'll come with you then. We got a better chance at finding him with two pairs of eyes. Right. Thanks. Sorry about all this. I guess there's nothing for it. I'll help look for him. Me too. Then we'll leave floor A to you guys. Right. Let's go. Come on, Clover. Right behind you. Ted Muji and I headed through the blue door while Alice, Clover, and Kay climbed into the elevator. What is this place? It looks like a bunch of hazmat suits, probably for protection against viral or chemical agents. Or hazardous materials, you could say. So these things keep you from getting sick? Yeah, that's the idea. We should ask Luna's group about them. They investigated this room first. There's another room underneath. Let's have a look then. Damn, he's not here. Oh, Quark, where the hell did you go? I should have kept a closer eye on him. If I'd just been watching. Tenmyoji's face was drawn and the knuckles of his fists were white. He was an old man, but until then I hadn't realized how old. Suddenly he looked very, very tired. Don't worry about it. I'm sure we'll find him. Come on, let's go try somewhere else. I put a gentle hand on his shoulder and guided him toward the exit. Hmm. 
So this is the Floor B warehouse. It looks just like the other one. It's pretty close. I'll give you that. Couple differences, though. Have a look over there. The doors are shining? No way. Are these chromatic doors? Yeah, seems like it. See over here? They've got a box next to them, just like the ones next to the other doors. I guess they're all white doors this time. We should go tell no, the... first we look for Quark. But... Look, I don't think he's here. What do you say we head back to Floor A for now? Maybe somebody else has already found him. Alright, let's go. <laughs> As if... Dude's in an icebox. just you. I'm guessing you haven't found Quark? I ran into Clover and Alice in the warehouse up on floor A. They told me about Quark and how you're all looking for him. So he hasn't come back to the warehouse? Nope. Maybe he just went off to ruminate on a solution to this game. Chewing his cut, so to speak. Ugh, what a gross sounding expression. Well, that's what ruminants do, isn't it? Hey, this is no time for jokes. You should be out there looking for him too. Uh... Why would I do that? It sounds so boring. Aren't you worried about him? Why the hell would I be worried about some kid I've never even seen before? What? For all I know, he's Zero Senior. He could be hiding in some swank little cubbyhole, swirling a glass of brandy and gloating. Look at all those fools running around. <laughs> That's insane! Yeah, there's... What, there's no way? Are you sure? Nobody knows what Zero looks like. You could totally be a kid. I warned you, Tenmyoji. I told you it was a bad idea to just swallow everything that little bastard told you. I trust Quark. <laughs> Suit yourself. Just don't come crying to me when it bites you in the ass. The air grew thick with tension, but before their tempers managed to set it alight, Phi burst into the room. Sigma, good. You've got Tenmyoji and Dio with you. We found something. Come on, all of you. Did something happen? Just, you'll understand when you get there, all right? Now come on. Where are we going? The crew quarters. Oh, <gasps> is somebody D-E-D? -E No. What in the world? Your heart stops. Your bracelet comes off. There was a roaring in my ears. Breathing, heartbeat, but my footsteps sounded muffled as if I was hearing them through layers of cotton. I pressed a shaking hand to Alice's neck. Her skin was still warm, but the only pulse I felt was my own. Luna was the same. They're dead. Both of them. By then, everyone had arrived, cramming themselves into the small cabin. Nobody spoke. Silence filled the room, flowing into my ears and throat like cold, brackish water. A chill shuddered its way through my body. I stood there frozen, staring at them. I'd seen a corpse before when we discovered the old woman, but this was different. The old woman had always been dead, at least to me. But Alice and Luna I had known. They'd been living, breathing people less than an hour ago. Reality settled around my shoulders like a thick lead blanket and my chest felt suddenly hollow. Who found them? My throat felt dry as I spoke. It was a full minute before someone answered. Clover, I think. 
When Kay and I ran over, she was just kind of standing there next to the bodies. It was pretty clear they were both dead. I think Clover killed them. Me? Kill them? You got into a fight with Alice after the A-B game, didn't you? It looked like you two knew each other before you ended up here. So maybe you were trying to get her killed. None of us had any connection to her, which means you're the most likely to have a motive for murder. It's easy to see why she would have killed Luna, too. She probably caught you offing Alice, so you did her in, too, so she wouldn't rat you out. Stop it, Dio. And the AB game is a motive, too. What do you mean? Once someone's dead, they can't vote anymore. That means they'll automatically ally. If your opponent's guaranteed to ally, then that's an easy three points. Um, no, because Alice and I were a pair. Who was Luna's opponent? Me and Dio. Then that would mean Dio had a motive as well. Yep. Alice saw him killing Luna, so he had to shut her up. Why the hell would I do something like that? We just said why, you fucking idiot! Pay attention next time. You do it to get an advantage in the next round of the AB game. What kind of cold-hearted bastard kills a lady for a few points? I'm more interested in Alice's condition than in her killer's motives. I am as well. What do you mean by her condition? Her clothes are barely disturbed. If it weren't for the knife and, uh, blood, she would look as if she was sleeping. Yeah, you're right. Well, maybe she was just killed while she was sleeping? If she wanted to take a nap, why sit on the floor when there's a bed nearby? That is a little strange. But a better question is, would she really be sleeping right now anyway? Hardly seems like a time for a nap. She was probably put to sleep then. What? How? Oh, come on. How did Zero Senior knock all of us out? Yeah, that white gas. So you're suggesting that Zero Senior knocked them out with the white gas, then killed them both? Yeah. However it happened, one of the people in this room did it. Well, maybe not one of the people in this room. I forgot about somebody, didn't I? Are you talking about Quark? He disappears and then suddenly there's a murder? I don't know about you, but that seems pretty suspicious to me. Nah, that's crazy. Quark couldn't have done this. All right, then why'd he disappear? There, there must have been some kind of accident. Then I might have it backwards. If he wasn't the murderer, maybe he was one of the murdered. Well, that would explain his sudden disappearance, right? You son of a bitch. Dio, knock it off. That's going too far. Oh, whoa, whoa, calm down there, big guy. Don't tell me it never crossed your mind. I just said what you were all thinking. Ten minutes remain until Ambidex game polling closes. All players, please enter your votes if no vote is recorded before the deadline has passed. Any non-voting parties will automatically ally. All right, time to head for the AB rooms, guys. Come on, we got more important things to worry about. Oh, so you're gonna abstain, huh? That's some good luck for you, Clover. Sigma was paired with Alice. Sadly, it looks like she won't be able to vote during this round. If Sigma abstains, then you'll have no one voting against you. Hey, come on, cheer up. This is your chance to escape. Escape? That's right. Right now, your VP's at six. Sigma's saying he won't vote, so if you choose betray... Clover would get three points, bringing her to nine. Hold on there. I didn't say anything about not voting. Oh, so you are going to vote? Well, you are, right? How exciting. Sigma should have six BP, just like Clover. That means this next round is a one-on-one -on -one fight. If one of them can trick the other one, they'll have enough BP to get out of here. Can't wait to see who wins. <laughs> oh, this is definitely getting interesting. Right. We should get to the Flore warehouse, guys. Come on. It is neat seeing the 6-6. Six, six. I mean, obviously the best thing to do in that situation is both people would betray. That's the most likely scenario, but since I get to do both. In which case, I probably end up with a betray betray and a betray ally. Clover, can you choose ally? 
We'll be stuck at six points if we both choose betray. But if we both cooperate, we'll get two points and then we'll have eight. That means it'll be pretty easy for us to get nine in the next round. Clover? Yeah? I said I want you to choose ally. Okay. You'll choose ally too, right? Of course. She gave me a strange sort of absent nod and turned to shuffle into the closest AB room. I wasn't sure if she'd actually understood me, but given the effect that Alice's death was having on her, I didn't think there was much else I could have done. I was preparing to enter the AV room on my own when I heard Fi's voice at my elbow and turned. Sigma, we- Hey Fi, something up? How are you planning to vote? I was just talking to Clover about that, replying to both vote ally. Yeah, I thought so. Listen to me, Sigma, because Luna is- because Luna's not voting in this round. Her vote will default to Ally. Her opponent is Dio and me. That means we're pretty much guaranteed to have 9 BP by the end of this round. You and Dio are gonna choose Betray. Luna's only got 1 BP left, but she's not wearing her bracelet anymore. You saw that, right? That means it won't do anything if her BP goes negative. Well, it's not like it can make her any debtor anyway. You have to betray Clover. If you can get to 9 BP, then I'll take you with us. Pretty sweet deal. You mean you're planning to escape? Of course. If you don't come with us, you're going to be stuck here for the rest of your life. Why? If you just wait until everyone's got 9... I can't do that. You really think Dio's going to stick around once he's got enough points to split? You got to make a choice here. The number 9 door is only going to open once. If you pick Ally and Clover does too, then you only have eight points. I promise you Dio's gonna make a break for it as soon as he can. If you wanna have any chance of getting out, you need those three points, now. So if I wanna get out, I have to betray Clover. Right. Why are you telling me this? How do I know you didn't just tell Clover the same thing? Talk to Clover? I'd have about as much luck talking to a potato right now. The truth is, I want you to come with me. Why? I just... Know that you're important, somehow. You just know, huh? Did you tell Kay? He's got six points right now too, you know. No, I haven't talked to him. He's playing against Ten Miyoji. Ten Miyoji's only got one point left. So if he chooses ally, he's gonna get penalized. Exactly. One minute remains until Ambidex game polling closes. It's almost time. Remember what I said. You have to choose Betray. She looked me in the eye until I nodded, then turned and jogged to her door. Boo boo boo. Is Clover really going to choose Ally? If she does, then all I have to do is choose Betray and I'm out of here. No, I promised I'd choose Ally, so that's what I'm going to do. But Dio's almost certainly going to have 9 PP after this round. If he gets out, I'm going to be stuck here forever. 10 seconds remain until Ambidex game polling closes. 9, 8, 7. What the hell am I supposed to do? Three, two, one. Take that logic! Round two of the Ambidex game has been completed. Results will be displayed in the warehouse. Thank you for your participation. Ambidex gates now opening. The door ground open and I stepped out. All around me, other AB rooms were disgorging their occupants. Wait! Dio! Fi's voice echoed hollowly across the room. I followed her eyes to the number 9 door. And to Dio. 
So he's going for it. I broke into a run, hoping foolishly that I might be able to catch him. No, he's going to try and open it. So it has come to this then. What's going on? He hasn't even seen the results yet. It took only seconds for Tenmyoji and Kate to explain the math to her. No! Points have been assigned or subtracted accordingly. Please check your bracelet to see your updated bracelet points. The announcer's voice hadn't even faded when Dio reached the door. With a grunt, he swung the lever down. Yes, it's opening. Wait! There's no point in trying to stop him now. The door has already opened. Dio leapt through the door without so much as a backward glance. Phi paused in front of it, then turned to look at me. What happened? I chose Ally. I made a promise. Clover trusted me. Sigma. I see. Makes sense. I guess that's how this ends, then. You had to make a choice that was right for you. And now, I have to make the choice that's right for me. Goodbye, Sigma. Fi turned, her eyes sad, and followed Dio through the door. The number nine door has closed. This ends the nonary game. Thank you for your participation. As the game is over, all doors other than the number nine door have been unlocked. Escape is not possible. Please enjoy your stay. Well, that's it. There's nothing we can do now. We can only hold out hope that help will arrive. Sigma. Thank you for, for choosing Ally. Yeah, well, a promise is a promise, right? What about Luna, Alice, and the old woman? Who killed them? Maybe one of the people who just escaped. Or maybe one of us. Well, there's one other person. God, Quark, you're right. I still have to find Quark. Suddenly full of energy, Tenmyoji leapt up and took off for one of the warehouse exits. That left only myself, Clover, and Kay. We stared at the number 9 door in silence. It would never open again. What else could we do but stare? <laughs>